Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, so today um, I've got a bit of a long day. So today I thought I would vlog and take you guys along so you can see what I'm doing. At the moment, um, I'm actually just viewing some land in a brie, um, which is amazing. I have so many shoots to do today, but I thought I'd turn on the camera because I know the last couple of videos that I did concerning real estate, you guys had a lot to say if I could put it that way, a lot to say. So I just wanted to kind of like quickly address the situation because I know a lot of you have said that, you know, the houses that I'm showing, they're not really for the diaspora, they're too expensive, they're too this, that and the other. And I do fully understand what you're saying. But at the same time, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show everybody a range of different types of for different types of budget okay so I'm going to show you like really expensive properties I'm going to show you some of the lower budget properties as well I'm going to show you a range so I'm not necessarily sticking to a specific target group I'm literally just showing you what's out there and so for those of you that have said that oh um you know these houses are just it's too much no one's gonna no one's no one's gonna like move into them no one's gonna buy them no one's gonna rent them and all of that please let me just tell you something okay please don't come for me i beg you please don't come for me okay because at the end of the day whether i choose to show that property or not that property is still going to sit there for sale but anyway these guys are waiting for me so um <laughs> you want a lip gloss <laughs> i beg you <laughs> i don't these guys that I'm, I'm here with, they're having <laughs> jokes, right? They're having jokes. We're talking about land and they're having jokes. Can you give me some makeup on this? <laughs> you have to grow your hair first. <laughs> yeah. so, so, he, so Trevor asked you a question. He said, how do you know what is good land? Or what do you look out for when you're buying land? Yeah, That's so it. you have to trace the root of title mm -hmm. and go to the basic okay. to see who actually, if it's a family land, yeah. you have to know the history of the family. Okay. How they came up? Uh, they came by the land. Okay. For example, if your grandfathers own it, yeah. did they own it through concurrence? Okay. Did they own it through purchase okay. or acquisition? Okay. So you need to trace the root of title okay. because land issues are in different levels actually. Mm -hmm. So for example, if my grandfathers yeah. own a certain parcel of land, yeah. and Trevor also says that his grandparent owns it. Yeah. That, that will be the point to begin from. Okay. Right? Because if they do not own it uh, rightfully and they sold it to any other person, yeah. one day, anybody that presents the right route of title will, 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 will defeat you in, in, in court. Uh -huh. So you need to trace the, the, the route of title. So the route of title is what gives you the, uh, the, the, the right to own the land. Okay. Okay. So yeah. is this documented information? Is it word of mouth? How, how do you actually get all this information? So some, mostly, some roots of title have, uh, are documented. Okay. Right? But in the court of law, verbal agreement is also accepted. Oh, really? Yes, it's right. accepted. If okay. you and I have agreed to do A, B, C, D, and there. So we call uh, uh, verbal evidence and okay. written evidence. So all these ones are are accepted in the law court. Are accepted in the law court. So you have to look at each of them and be sure, you know, just mm. sample the documents and be sure what the these things are. I need to ask a lot of questions. Mm. Once if you're buying land and you're asking questions and the people are like they are getting edgy. Yeah, yeah, that's please a sign. Run, run away. <laughs> <laughs> so just watch their body language. language yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. they should be free. I mean, if somebody owns something, mm -hmm. they'll relax, they'll calm down, yeah. they'll yeah. give you the various. Yeah. Okay. yeah, but if it's a stool, then it's a chief that has the right to lease the land. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if it's a family land, yeah, it's a family head. Yeah, that is the. The lessor, he's the one that can grant the land. So if he does not sign, yeah. it's not legit, uh, right? Okay. Uh, so how do you find out who the head of the family is? Because somebody can just appear in a family and say that they're the head of the family. I'm, I'm sure that has happened before, and this is what's caused a lot of issues in Ghana with people pretending they're part of the same family, but they pretend that they're the head, and they will grant you whatever you need as long as you pay a certain amount of money. So oh. how do you actually identify that this is actually the person that is the head of the family? Obviously, you have to do proper uh, due diligence. And how you do you do that? To, you have to go to the family. Every family has a family house, isn't it? Mm. 
So you go and speak to the locals. Personally, what I do is I go down to the grassroots. So if you show me a land today, the next day I'm going to go there, mm -hmm. gather data about the history of the land. Okay. You will definitely speak to about three, four, or five people. Okay. If you get the same answer, uh, answer then You're you can right use track. that. Yeah. But if you get varied, you know, or contrast informations, then you have to take your time and analyze it better. Okay. I tell you what, the truth is always one. Okay. Right? People, you know, you're definitely going to mm. get something that will give you the truth. So I go to the ground. You go to the grassroots. Mm. You speak to them. Who is the family head? Who is that person? Right. Yeah, and then they will tell you. Then when you meet them, you have answers. Okay. So you question them and they are like, how do you get to know this? Mm -hmm. okay. You know? Yeah. 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 So, so okay. one of the things you said earlier on was that um, you get a Lodian land. A Lodian title. Title, sorry. You get a Lodian title. So forth. Now, what is very interesting is that obviously you go to the family, you go to the store, you find out who this person is. Is there any possibility that they can all work together to make sure that they, you know? So you're not going to. Done? So you're not going to go there as a purchaser. I mean, you just go as an inquirer. You know, as an inquirer, just get a drink, find a way, like a, a CID, a CID. <laughs> Doesn't come to you and just tell you that oh, I'm this and that. Okay. You find a way and just chat with them, you know, gather information. Okay. You know, on a friendly, you can just create a friendly conversation. Okay. Start asking friendly questions. Honestly speaking, five different people, you will definitely get the truth. Mm. Okay. You will get the truth. You're not going to come. I'm going to buy this land and that. That's, That's it. I've actually yeah. remembered. Yeah. Danny, what I was going to ask you. Yeah. Because you said, for example, the land where we've gone to. Yeah. The second phase, yeah. the first part of it belonged to somebody, yeah. the second part of it belonged to somebody else, yeah. and the third part of it belonged to somebody else. So, for example, yeah. if I'm a, a newbie and I'm trying to yeah. do an investigation, on it, yeah. Yeah. how am I supposed to know which part is the first and where does that end? Yeah. And which part is the second? When does that start? I tell you, I told you this guy is brilliant. He's an yeah. intelligent guy. <laughs> 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 so, you know, we spoke about root of title, the Alodia owner. Yes. So obviously there's one family that owned the entire parcel of land. Right. They sold portions of it upon our investigation. We realized that they sold portion of it to individuals. Okay. So, and then they had some left for the family. Okay. So when we conducted uh, our due diligence, yeah. we got those facts. And then we went further, requested to survey the land with our surveyors mm -hmm. and conduct a search. So, we actually got the records to match their claim. Okay. So we did a, a further investigation and we found out those individuals that have bought them. So we actually purchased from two individuals, one 11 acres, another 17 acres, okay. and then went ahead and bought the rest that the family had because of proper due diligence, mm -hmm. right? Because some of the transactions are not recorded at the commission. Somebody just takes the document, they do not register it. Yeah. But that does not mean that they do not own it. So often at times, people rely solely on search report at the commission. That alone does not give the entire uh, as, as true uh, account on the ground, okay. right? So when you do proper investigation, you get to know. And at times, at times, we even go further by doing what? Taking possession. Mm -hmm. When I say take possession, it means that you start developing the land. You can yeah. agree that, you know, get greater on that. Yeah, I just mm. want to test the land. Trust me, any land in Ghana, when you you put a grader on it, someone within, will turn up. Within yeah. three hours, you'll find a tree yeah. in it. <laughs> it's so so a bit of everything, practical uh, uh, in the, uh, due diligence, so we call something legal possession and fiscal possession. Mm. We actually even do more of the fiscal possession because once you get to the land, you definitely find the, the true owner. Mm. Yeah, so okay. yeah, that's what we do. Awesome. But yeah. how about those that they, I know they, they said they don't really do it normal, but they have people like land guards or something like that I heard about. I know, I also heard that they don't have that normal, but... They don't have what? Land guards. Oh, they do? They, land guards. But land they, guards the law bans land guard, but yeah, often at times, it. What, what it is is, for example, let's say two fashions are fighting over a certain piece of land. Yeah. One group will definitely um, have their... <laughs> what they call land police <laughs> mm -hmm. that will be guarding the land yeah or equally if you are a developer right you bought a land from a family or a stool 
and you refuse to pay them, they will agitate and they will mm. start disturbing your client. They will send the, you know, the asafo, which is the, the boys in the stool yeah. or the, the family to come and harass your client. That's uh. why we as a company, one thing we are noted for is how good we pay our landlords. So land issues are, you know, they are in various levels. They are at various levels. Some of them are self-inflicted. Some of them are by no fault of you or, you know, but the ones that you can control, which is making sure that you pay for what uh, 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 you are supposed to pay for, you also make sure that mm -hmm. you do not go and take more than you are giving. Mm -hmm. For example, a family is assigning a land of 20 acres to you. The chief or the family head does not go to the site. They assign you a surveyor and uh, principal elders of the family. The elders tells you, oh, we can add some two acres. This one, give us that money to pocket. That two acres, one day, one day, one day. When they sold all the land, they are going to audit. When they audit, they will find out. And there, mm. you create a litigation issue, which right. you have brought upon yourself. Right. So for us, okay. we always go for what, we, what is due us. And nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. Okay. That yeah. Makes sense. Is that what yeah. you meant by the when you started the conversation by saying somehow some people bring issues on themselves? Exactly. Right. Exactly. So right. Stick to what you've been given. Exactly. On the land itself and register that portion yeah. of land. One of the reasons why they introduced uh, barcode, you know, barcode and side plan, mm -hmm. is to stop some of those things. You know the yeah. that side plan that we used to do the ordinary one is called certified. It's endorsed mm -hmm. by a licensed surveyor. Yes. You can blow it. When I say right. blow it, means you can be given this part of the land. Mm -hmm. You can sit in the office and extend it. Oh, wow. really? Yes, but with a barcode, you can't do that. Because ah. it's got a point, it's a GPS point. Exactly. So that's why they introduced that to prevent blowing of the land. So you can be given oh, so five acres. Expanding. Yeah, five mm. acres. You can blow it to cover ten acres. Wow. Yes. Oh, people are criminal. Yeah, that's why oh, they. The, the law. The framers of the law, you know, mm. actually, the Lands Commission came up with a new approved plan. You yeah. can, you can do that. So, Daniel, I've recently heard that the Lands Commission have now got a portal where you can actually do your land searches if you've got a GPS point or your site plan. Is this something that you use to check? Well, it is, that's it is, but you know, um, honestly, I have not used that channel because I wanted my things done fast, fast. Sometimes there's network problem and all this, and so. We just scan our document and send it to the commission. If you scan your site plan and send it to the commission, you can get your search results. You don't need to go there in person. Okay. You just send a scan copy of the site plan and you get your search conducted. Next. Voila. Yes. So you make your payment. Mm -hmm. Bring me some money. I need some payment. Yeah. When are you going to do the search on my land? <laughs> I like that. Though. So, so how do we know what costs are associated? So people that are new to this don't feel like they're overpaid for which one for the what for what for the searches so they want to buy land they've seen land they really like it they yeah they want to make sure it's legitimate but they also want to pay a fair price they know that they're coming from abroad and you know they understand that the locals are going to want to get a bit more money than expected but how do you know what is fair is it what you're willing to pay is it what you're willing how do you know what's fair no you can contact the commission directly Right on. You, yeah, you find the various charges for their services. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. That's so, good to know. Yeah, it's not always that the. Well, I, I understand, but it's not always accurate that the locals will want to take advantage of the. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but in instances, I agree. So, you contact directly the lands commission. You can get all their charges um, related to all their services that they render to the public. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. That's all. For Okay. So, for those of you that don't know, um, I've actually employed Danny as my driver. <laughs> so he, um, he, wherever I need to go, I just call him. He uses his car, comes, picks me up, and takes me to the various locations. So he's actually a member of my staff right now. Look at Trevor. Okay. <laughs> Trevor is enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fully lying. I'm, I'm sure she wants to lose all those files. Oh you don't want to lose all those files. These guys have been harassing me all day, so I'm getting my own back. You see that? I love it. Oh man, I mean.